Oh, Suzanne, if anyone is out there that can hear this, that has you, please we'll do whatever it takes to bring you back. We love you, we miss you, your girls need you. No questions asked. However much they want, I will do whatever it takes to get you back. Honey, I love you. Hi, my YouTube friends and family. Let's keep some awareness on missing Suzanne Morphy. Today marks exactly one year since 49-year-old Suzanne Morphy was reported missing near her Colorado house. Suzanne was reported missing on Mother's Day, May 10th of 2020. Suzanne allegedly went missing while on a bike ride close to her Salida, Colorado home. Reportedly, Suzanne's husband, Barry Morphew, said that he last seen his wife around 5 o'clock, 5.30 that morning as he was leaving their home to head to an out-of-town job in Broomsfield. In Broomsfield, it's approximately three hours from Barry and Suzanne's house in the Salida, Maysville, Colorado area. And there's been a lot of speculation towards Barry considering he's just his lack of attention in regards to his missing wife, his lack of helping in the conducted searches, and overall his suspicious behavior this past year. Now, the case looks to finally be moving along. A lot has happened in the past week, as many of you are aware. Barry was arrested on May 5th for murder in the first degree, tampering with physical evidence, and attempt to influence a public servant. Now, side note here, the influence or attempt to influence a public servant, this could mean Barry was trying to bribe someone. I'm not saying it's the case, only that it could be. It could also mean that maybe Barry threatened someone to stay quiet, but again, key word here, could have. You know, I obviously do not know, but there's a chance it could have been either, either of those two things, but let's move on. Although Barry was arrested, we still don't know where his wife, Suzanne Morphew, is. She has still not been found. So let's take a look at some things that I've mentioned in a past video and if you guys have not seen it, but just things that we know in this case. A neighbor, or reportedly a neighbor, called the Chaffee County Communication Center at approximately 546 p.m., on the Mother's Day, Suzanne went missing, and she reported Suzanne missing. And I think what led up to it is one of her daughters had tried to call their mom. Suzanne didn't answer, so I think maybe they called the neighbor, and that's what prompted the neighbor to go next door to check, and her bike was not there. Now, Suzanne's bike, which apparently was planted, in my opinion, due to Barry's arrest, of course, was found along with a personal item of Suzanne's a few days later. The, pers the bike was found, and then a few days later, the personal item was found. Law enforcement has not confirmed what the personal item is at this time. Both items were found near Suzanne's house. Many speculate that the item that was found the personal item that they're not telling the public. Many are spec speculating it could be that baby blue helmet because Suzanne had on the baby blue helmet in her first missing poster, but not in the last one. And Suzanne's brother, Andy Mormon, he conducted a search for Suzanne that Barry did not participate in. Now, Barry said the reason he didn't help in the search is because he was never asked and it was reported that that job Barry had in Broomsville the day that Suzanne went or was reported missing, that he didn't even have to be at that job on that particular day. And his workers stated they didn't even have the tools required to even do the job. It was also said that the hotel room Barry stayed in while in Broomsville, that it reeked of chlorine. And Barry and Suzanne, they moved to Colorado from Indiana in the spring of 2018. And it's been said by Suzanne's family and friends that Suzanne wasn't really happy with the move that she basically, you know, just, I think Barry was the one that wanted to move, not her. Now, Barry and Suzanne, um, 
or I'm sorry, Barry sold his and Suzanne's Puma Path home that Suzanne went missing from, allegedly. He sold that house approximately 10 months after Suzanne was reported missing. It was actually listed for sale only five months after his wife Suzanne's disappearance on October the 5th of 2020. And again, remember, he said that he and his two girls believed that Suzanne was abducted from that house, and that was the reason he put it up for sale, was because the girls were terrified to be at the house. Now, Barry spoke out early on, and he said he felt the sheriff's department mishandled the invest investigation and that they were trying to put the blame on him. And we also know uh, there's been many, many search warrants. I, I don't even know how many at this point, but they are sealed, so we, we don't even know, you know, what those can, what's, what they consist of, what's on the search warrants, what they found in the house, but there are many search warrants that were served on Barry and Suzanne's house, their Puma Path house, and Trevor Noel, Barry and Suzanne's nephew, we also know that he set up a GoFundMe account, and Barry and Suzanne's daughter, she shows as the beneficiary. Barry shows on there, I think, as an officer or something similar on the GoFundMe account. But it is now inactive. It raised $33,552. I just checked it today. Again, it is now inactive. I know originally it was said that receipts were going to be shown to, you know, where the funds from this went, but I don't recall ever seeing that or anything related to that put out. Now, Suzanne's brother, Andy Mormon, he said early on he felt Barry was responsible for Suzanne's disappearance, but Barry said in his defense that Andy wasn't a good brother, that he wasn't there for Suzanne when Suzanne needed him. So, you know, Barry just, I guess, wanting to make Andy look bad because Barry didn't help in that search. I don't know. But, of course, you know, Barry's going to put the blame on someone other than Barry. Now, it does appear, as I talked in one of my last videos, that Suzanne and Barry's two daughters are standing by their dad. They were reportedly in the courtroom after the father was arrested, blowing kisses, doing hearts, just hand gestures, heart hand gestures to their dad, mouthing I love you. So again, you know, they're they're standing by their dad. But let me know what you guys think that basically I wanted to get this video out just to keep Suzanne's case out there and to bring awareness to it. And as always, thank you all for watching.